Hey, welcome back to JLG Woodworking. Today we're going to be refinishing an old butcher block top, which I got from a buddy of mine. He was using it as an arts and crafts table for his kids, as you can see, and they took really good care of it. Uh, there was a bunch of chips, a bunch of divots, lots of paint, lots of different finishes. So we're going to take it, we're going to go ahead and uh, clean it up. Right here I'm just gouging it out. I'm actually using a, uh, a carving... Uh, carving knife. I want to make those uh, divots as deep as possible. Once I do that and I get everything carved out, I'm going to go ahead and start the sanding process. Right now I'm taking everything down. I'm going pretty aggressive here. I'm going with the 60 grit sandpaper. I'm going to sand it down, get most of the finish, most of the paint off. I'm not trying to get everything off in the first pass. I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to vacuum it off, get the dust off, give it a water pop, now that I've water popped it in between coats, I'm going to let it dry. And I happen to run out of black CA glue. So here what I'm doing is I'm just mixing up a one-to-one -one ratio epoxy. It's a, a, th a thin pour epoxy. And I'm going to put a little bit of black dye in there and we're going to accomplish the same thing. The only thing is, is I'm going to have to wait overnight for this to dry. Whereas if I was using the black CA glue, I wouldn't have to do that. I've got these handy little syringes, these 20 ml syringes that I got on Amazon and I use just to go ahead and lay the epoxy out. These things are really great. I'll put a link to them down below. So I'm just spreading the epoxy out and all the divots, all the cracks. Once we get that done, as you can see there was quite a bit. I'm just, uh, I'm torching it out for two reasons here. Getting rid of bubbles. These aren't very deep, so there's not a lot of bubbles, and you don't generally get bubbles when you're using this one-to-one -one ratio epoxy. But I'm also speeding up the drying time a little bit by adding that extra heat to it. So now I'm just going to let this dry overnight. I know it's an extra step, but I had to wait two or three days for the CA glue to come from Amazon, and I didn't really have the time. So I came back. I'm just going to go ahead and I'm sanding over the epoxy spots again with the aggressive 60 grit sandpaper. Just cleaning that up. You can see there it wasn't exactly flush. There's a nice little finish shot. You can see it's still a little sunken and the epoxy went down. So I went ahead and I found I had a little bit more black CA glue. So now I'm coming in. I'm putting the black CA glue just to finish off where I had the black epoxy. Just a little bit. Spray it with a little bit of activator. That'll dry it up real quick. And then I'm going over it. Now I've switched to 120 grit sandpaper. I do a little with the machine. I do a little by hand. Now I'm just evening it out with 120 grit sandpaper. I'm going to go ahead and water pop it. Once we're done water popping it, we're going to wait for it to dry. There I'm just uh, scraping a little bit of a high spot that I saw. There it is, water popped. Now we're going to come back again and I'm going to do 120 grit one more time. I'm passing 120 grit. This is a nice easy sanding because we've already hit it. I go both ways across the grain. It's a random orbit sander so it doesn't really make a difference. Now we're taking the router, we have an 8 inch radius bit. We're going to go ahead, we're going to go to the corners, and then we're going to do a climb cut so that we don't get any carrots. It's looking good. I check the corners. I'm going back over it with 120 grit again, making sure I do full strokes all the way across. And then I'm going to switch sanders. I'm going to go to a linear sander, it's a full sheet. And that's basically going to take any of the sanding marks that I put in when I was doing the uh, corners. Here I am, I'm just water popping the piece again because I'm going to get ready to go up and grit to 180 grit, I'm sanding there. Since we're using Rubio Monocoat, this is gonna be our last coat. Our last sanding, I should say. I'm cleaning it off, there I am, I'm rubbing in. I'm using mineral spirits, I'm not using the Rubio's uh, 
raw wood cleaner, it does the same exact thing. I mixed up the Rubio Monic Coat. I've got my spreader. I'm spreading it out. I'll go ahead and speed this up for you because it's not really worth trying, but I can sit here and talk about it. So I spread it out. It's, a, it's an oil-based wax, so I just get enough even coverage with it when I'm spreading it out. A little bit goes a long way with Rubio. You can never put too little on, but you can always leave too much. I don't know if that makes sense to you. Here I'm just using a, a, a car buffer, it's a Ryobi. What that does is I'm working it in, I'm getting it nice and even. You don't have to do this. You can just go straight to a rag and wipe it off. I like to do it. There it is after one coat. It's kind of got a matte finish. Rubio does have directions in order to go ahead and put on a second coat. So what I did was here is I added a 400 grit sandpaper to my orbit sander. I did a very light pass. I wiped it down with a microfiber towel. And then I went ahead and I took an abrasive pad and I went ahead and did that. I mixed up Rubio. On your second coat you're going to use less than half the amount. I spread it out nice and easy. I go ahead and buff it in. One thing I should say is I did wait 24 hours before applying the second coat. That is recommended. I'm switching the pad just to take off any excess. Like I said, you can never leave too much on. There you have it. There's the old table. There's the new table. That's two coats. I will be adding some Rubio Renew oil to this. That's going to give it a 6 to 8% bump and sheen. Here's just a little bit of footage I didn't show you when I had finished the bottom part. And this right here is the second coat. I'm just buffing it in. You can see that this looks nice. You don't have to put a second coat on the bottom, but I ran into some problems with the knots and the CA glue. So I wound up having to go ahead and put a second coat on it. So there you have it, the Rubio Monic Coat with the 2C+. Plus. If you like what you see, please like and subscribe and comment below. Thank you.